Welcome to the Becoming You Show with me, your host, Leah Rowling. Do you believe you are capable of choosing your future? Sometimes it takes just one person to believe in you, for you to believe in yourself. If you find yourself continuing to say, someday I will take better care of myself, only to continue living the same day over and over and over again, then you, my friend, are in the right place. I am your biggest cheerleader, inspiring you to become you, on purpose and with intention. Are you ready to create a life you love? I'm excited to share with you some big ideas that you can use today to inspire, impact, and influence your life and everyone in it. The Becoming You Show starts now. Hello, everybody. I am so excited to be here today, and I'm excited because I have my first guest ever on the show, which means she's got to be pretty darn special because you know how much I love each and every one of you. Her name is Miss Claudia Sam, and she is with me on this two-part podcast. She is a soul connection coach, and uh, she supports passionate leaders and guides who deep down know that they're here for a bigger reason. So, and she helps teach them confidence and how to be in their light so that they can be uh, in their alignment and live out their passions. And she's amazing. And I'm so excited that she's here today because we're talking about faith in the unknown and our way out of stagnation. And so you might want to just stop, like hit pause, run over to her show quick and watch um, on her show. And we did the first part, part one, and her show is Be Happy Now. Um, and you're not going to want to miss it. So you want to catch the, maybe the first part of that. Although I don't know if it's really going to matter because we're just going to, we're just going to have a conversation that's super organic and super light and super, um, hopefully inspiring. So whether or not you go catch hers first or mine, it really doesn't matter, but make sure you go over to the Be Happy Now show with Miss Claudia Sam. So anyway, it is my pleasure to introduce you to my audience and to the show. Welcome, Miss Claudia Sam. Oh, thank you so much, Leah, for that beautiful introduction. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah. So tell us, tell our audience a little bit about you, a little bit about what you do, a little bit about how you got into this space and how this topic is so important right now, especially with the clients and in these times that we're all facing. Thank you. You know, I come from a corporate world as we might all resonate and relate to that word. I used to put work ahead of my, of everything. And yet work was my joy. That was what I was focusing on. That was where I thrived. And I would also identify myself to the job that I had to the title. And I was seeking for the title, the next best thing higher up in the corporate ladder. And eventually I did 180 hours over time without being paid. And I realized that that could no longer happen. And so I changed jobs and there I was again in the seeking mode until I realized I just carried the same work ethic into the new job and I burned out. And from that burnout, I didn't know what it was to feel. I didn't go to yoga because I was like, it's too slow. I need to go fast. And yet there I was burned out, unable to breathe properly, panic attacks and all of it. Well, I had to go to yoga in a way that was the way that was the path that I chose at that time. And I started to get to know myself better. And you know, in pigeon pose, crying, wondering what else is there? If I'm crying in pigeon pose, then what <laughs> else is hiding underneath? And that was one of the first times that was in 2013, where I realized there is so much stuckness in my body. There are so many stuck emotions that I don't even know exist. And through one two yoga teacher trainings, traveling, living in Nepal, I realized that having faith in 
or rather belief in yourself was almost the same or equivalent as having faith in the unknown. Because when you trust yourself, you believe in the synergy of the universe. You believe that, yep, you burned out, but look at the beauty that it brought you to. And that was my way out of stagnation. Oh, I love it. I have a similar yoga story. It's fabulous. We didn't talk about this. You guys, when I met her, it was just like a snap. Like, yep, we're good. Like we talked for like 30 minutes. We're like, we're doing a show together. <laughs> the <laughs> audience needs to be her and vice versa. So, but my yoga experience was similar. Like I come from an athletic background. I'm a runner. I'm a sports junkie. And so my girlfriends were like, you got to come to yoga. I'm like, what? I am not, I'm, I'm not sitting or stretching on a square mat for 45 minutes. No, thanks. Yawn. And then she was like, well, no, we incorporate burpees and weights. It's like this sculpt yoga. I'm like, okay, that I can try. <laughs> and now I do not like that type of yoga. Now I love the type of yoga where you do heart openers and you cry and you do pigeons and you cry and you, and you stretch yourself in ways and you come back to center, back into alignment with your head and your heart, back to truth in finding yourself. So yes, I love it all. I love it all. Um, so I wanna ask you, to get out of this stagnation, right? We talked a little bit about it on your show. So don't forget to go over there if you haven't already. We talk a little bit about identifying emotions in the body and kind of how to clear them. But we're gonna take up some time in this uh, episode to really talk about how to, how to clear them, how to break free from the permissions and the need to be validated and discover that sense of self, because I truly believe that it's that when we try to people, please, when we try to pretend, when we try to placate, it's because we've lost our sense of self. Because if you knew who you are, you don't have to please anyone. You're already pleasing enough. When you know who you are and you're in alignment with your own integrity, you don't have to pretend to be anybody else. You can be authentically, unapologetically a hot mess, and you can be authentically and apologetically giving and generous and loving and kind and great. And so when I find, at least for me, stagnation in the body, where whether it's frustration or resentment, that's a big one, right? Resentment is the gap between what you thought was going to happen and what did happen. And generally we throw out our resentment on that person, that thing, something outside of us. And if you know, if you've been listening to me a while, you know that I teach that nothing we experience is outside of ourselves. So if it's inside of ourselves, Miss Claudia Sam, what do you do? How do you free yourself from that emotion, from that stuckness, from that stagnation place? Mm, thank you. I One of the main things that might be so uncomfortable for many, I'm not saying it's comfortable for me, but yeah, no, it's not comfortable, but <laughs> live it, live it, live the resentment, live the emotion, live the stuckness, live the, I feel like crap today, live that, or you use the words doing that emotion, right? Doing resistance, doing angry, anger. And that is for me, one of the practices that is a practice because it's an ongoing thing. And what I've noticed is that even though it's uncomfortable at the beginning, it used to actually, it used to be very, very uncomfortable to the point where I would be mad at yoga because yoga didn't put a spell on me that I would never feel. And so I would resent yoga for that. And so when I would feel I'd be angry, why am I feeling I'm supposed to be happy all the time. And in the end, what I'm recognizing is that emotions are energy and motion. And therefore, if I feel stuck, if I feel like I'm scared about the next step, and it shows up in my body. So two things that are coming up for me to share is that I practice being I practice just being, even if it's uncomfortable, I don't need to say this is uncomfortable and I don't need to judge it. I just get to be with it. And that includes the second part for me. And it's the breath. 
I feel like the breath is one of the most magical tools that we can take anywhere in our lives, at the grocery store, in a conversation, mute your conversation and take deep breaths if you need to. I love to use my breath to get out of my head. Okay, I'll add a third one in there. The <laughs> affirmation it. that I love to use lately, because you know we change all the time and we add a bunch of different practices that work for us. To get out of the head and into the heart, I love to use this. I surrender my mind to love. I surrender my mind to love. Period. If my mind is seeking all other ways to be angry and whatever and scared of the unknown and trying to make up all these scenarios, then I surrender my mind to love. And that opens up a light and an opportunity to go from the negative what ifs to the positive what ifs. And that's where we happen for me. That's where faith in the unknown just kind of happens with these few shifts. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. Is that a similar process to, I like one, I love that you said, I just be right. And I know that I use my B method and I want to talk about that because I think it's really important as we are trying to flush out. Um, but I believe that we're stuck in stagnation because we're resisting feeling. That's, that's where I believe because we're not taught how to feel feelings. We're just not, um, we're taught either feel your feelings. Okay. How do I do that? Right. Can somebody please tell me how, or just sweep them under the rug where all of the other good feelings go and unfelt feelings fester. And I think they fester as stagnation in the body. So you have a tune in method right? Can you share that for my audience so that that might help them free themselves from some of these unfelt feelings that they've either been carrying unconsciously in their body somewhere um, as stuck states or allow them to experience the circumstance, the situation that's outside of themselves and bring it back in? Thank you. Yeah. So if you're listening and you have a pen and paper next to you, I invite you to just draw three columns just so you have a visual of it. The left column will be balance. And that is balance between the head and the heart. Because in order to have faith in the unknown and in the uncertainty and get out of stagnation, we get to be both and both the stagnation and the flow, both the unknown and the certainty. And so to find balance between the head and the heart, there's three, there's three um, <laughs> steps. I have a broken finger I'm, and I'm trying to do numbers three with my three fingers. It's a little hard. Okay. So the three steps in first in balance in that first part of the tune in method, that is, so the first step is awareness of the body. We talk about that on my show in the first part of this two-part series, being aware of how the stagnation or any emotion or however the mental activity shows up in your body. Step two is being aware of the mind. Okay, what's there in the mind? What's the story? What's the button I keep pressing? And what's the thing I keep trying to make myself believe that is helpful or harmful? Step three in balance is being aware of your emotions. And just be as per what I was sharing before. And that one, two, three, the being aware of the body, mind, and emotions I like to call that the awareness wheel because the awareness wheel makes it that you can enter the wheel starting with the awareness of the mind and you can enter the wheel starting with the awareness of the body or the emotions. It doesn't matter. One can be ahead of the other or after the other. And when you get to be present with all of these three components of who you are, then you have a really solid foundation to go to the second column that you drew there. The middle column would be connect connect to, well, who you are, what are your needs? What are your desires so that you can set boundaries and not have to do things that are draining you and instead choose to feel uplifted instead of, yeah, giving all of yourself to others. What do you like? What are your soul values? What's your vision? What's your purpose? And when you have the solid foundation within balance, it's easier to not take all these examples from people outside of you and really connect to who you are. 
And then the last part is trust. So that third column is trust. And that is where you get to recognize the difference between the voice of the ego and the voice of the heart. And when it comes to having faith in the unknown and getting out of stagnation, I truly believe that it is about trusting your intuition so that the ego doesn't steer you into leading life with fear because that's where stagnation comes in. If we lead life with fear, then we don't go for our dreams. Then we don't embody the version of ourselves who we're meant to be. We don't lead other people into becoming the best version of themselves. And we rob the world from truly experiencing ourselves. And I know that if you're listening to Leah's show and to my show, it's because you're here for a bigger reason and you want to make an impact in the world. And when you can trust your intuition and notice when the fear is there and not choose the fear, that is one of the powers that you get to, to choose for yourself. Ugh. Don't you see why I love her, right? <laughs> right, my friends? Yes, it's all so, so good. I mean, it's so good because... I, I talk about becoming you, your best version of you on this show a lot. And it isn't selfish. It's required. It's our responsibility. I think becoming the best version of ourselves is our innate purpose. Like I believe that we were, I mean, of the billions of people on this planet, you are, and you have special gifts that you need to share. And if fear is robbing you from sharing, you're robbing the world of your amazingness and your uniqueness and your voice and, and your love and your heart, all of it. And so we need to get you unstuck so that you can be that very, very best version and take your very best version into the world um, and share it loud and proud. So anyway, I'm super excited uh, about <laughs> Thank you, that two method because I think it does, it, it breaks it up. It, it, it puts a process, a framework around what it is that almost a framework around what it is to be human, right? Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. There's a framework there. And we, when we think about the balance side of the equation, right, it's, it is, it's about harmonizing, aligning in congruence with our head and our heart and our body. Right. And totally. Right. And when you get that, then you go into the middle one, which is connect. And it allows you to connect with yourself, with source and with others. And then when you can connect in that way, you can trust. Right. And I love it. And I think trust is the antidote for unknown. It is. And it's hard. It, it, yeah. it's, it, well, wait, it can't, it, we can choose to make it mean that it's hard to trust when we don't have a solid foundation. Like imagine a tree in the wind, if it didn't have roots anchored into the earth, it would go every which way. And then it would like fall on a, on a house and it would destroy things. So I feel like once you're anchored into who you are and you believe that you belong and you believe that you are worthy of validating yourself and loving yourself, then you can rise in this tree trunk and allow you, the expression of you to be at its fullness. Um, even if the wind comes because you're anchored. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that belief conversation because there is, I've studied a lot in my quantum studies around neuroplasticity and the belief effect and you, your results can never exceed your belief. And yet we just get to choose to believe it. Anything you want, you can choose to believe it, even if you don't have any proof. But that's when it's the most fun. When you believe in something and somebody will be like, well, didn't you see, didn't you read, watch the news? Didn't you see this? Didn't you read this? Here's an article that'll discount it. You'll be like, it's okay. You can be right. You can be right about what you want to believe but I believe what I believe. And you don't have to make excuses for it. You don't have to apologize for it. You don't have to second guess yourself. You could just, you just get to believe for the sake of believing. Totally. So yeah. So good. So good. It is. It's so good. So what about your BU method? What is a practice that you would recommend or that you do for yourself? Maybe it is from the, your BU method. Maybe it's um, distinct. Um, I'd love for you to, to tell me, tell us. Yeah. So the work that I teach is that circumstances and situations are out of our control. 
They are neutral. Okay. And again, I know when pe I know people will say that's really mean, like this was really hard for me. Again, I'm not invalidating your thoughts or your feelings about it, but what is just is. And again, I'm not saying that flippantly. If you were brain dead, you wouldn't give any meaning at all. You, you would not give any meaning at all to the situation or the circumstances. So your thoughts, your, your perspective on it gives that situation meaning and it's valid. And so your thoughts then create your feelings. And so the B method is your thinking and your feeling create your state of being. So the B method is similar to kind of your first part of balance, which means you just sit and you think about what is it that I'm thinking about? And it might just be that you're feeling it first. And then we're reminded that feelings are indicators of a story within. They're not dictators that we should react to or repress or revel in or indulge in. No, it's, it's an indicator. Huh, I wonder what story is there. Hmm, let's think about it. Or sometimes you know it's a thought. You're like, oh, that child frustrates me. And then you have frustration, right? I want you to think about the thought and, and then feel what comes up for you and consider is this thought serving me? Does this thought align with the best of who it is that I am? Does this feeling fuel my best action? And if it doesn't, can you lovingly swap it out? Like lipstick, like this doesn't look good on me. Like, great, like I need a new shape, right? You've got to think about a thought that's something that's believable. You're not going to go from my mother-in-law is awful to my mother-in-law is amazing, but you could for sure go to my mother-in-law is awful to my mother-in-law is a human being. It frees you up to, to compassion. It frees you up to be curious about where you could be wrong about that. And a lot of my coaching in the B method is what if you were wrong about that thought? What if that thought we have between 40 to 60,000 thoughts on any given day 95% of them are from our subconscious programming, which means they're from our past, which means that they're probably not even ours. They were borrowed, they were recycled, um, and a lot of them aren't serving the greater good of who we are. And they might have served at some point of time, but as we mature and as we're not raising our hand to go to the bathroom anymore, we don't need permission. We don't need permission to set new rules for ourselves. Just because this is the way you've always done it, doesn't mean that that's the best way that you should continue to do it. You get to write the rules. You get to play the dance. You get to find the music. It's your life and you get to live it. So the B method just brings you right back into what thought am I thinking? What feeling is that generating for me? And who am I being with this thought and with this feeling? Because how you're being is for sure fueling how you're showing up in the world. It's showing up as to whether or not you're reacting or resentful or you're avoiding or you're defensive or you're showing up in love and kindness and compassion and curiosity. I love so that. can you shift your B state into something that you choose on purpose, which again, it brings you back into your knowing because when you know who you are, you're thinking, you're feeling your identity, your B state, you know what to do. Right. The, yeah. And there's an analogy coming up for me to share, imagining yeah. that, you know, I can, I can hear some of the people, part of my community going, but I don't want to do the work. Great. Then stay stuck in traffic. It's almost like that big highway, you know, where you're going, you're going towards that destination. That is your vacation. And on the way there, you thought I'm going to enjoy the road because the ride, because there's so much to view and to see on the way there, but then you're stuck in traffic. Okay. Well, by decluttering the thoughts and noticing what they are and recognizing your way of being on the way there. It's almost like, are you choosing to turn up the music in the car and like roll down the windows and show everyone else who's complaining in their own cars that you're having a great time so that then the mental traffic cars just get out of the way. You know, that is your, that is your choice. And that's what you can control out of all of it. So yeah. Thank you for sharing oh. your method. Oh my gosh. So good. Yes. Yeah, so good. Um, okay. So tell us a little bit about this upcoming workshop. 
you have coming up in September and how my audience can find you, how they can email you if they want more information. Tell us all the goods. Thank you. You know, I was inspired by my clients and by our conversation today to offer a live recording of my Be Happy Now show, followed by a live Q&A and free coaching group session. So I'm calling it a pop-up workshop. And the topic is going to be on how to flow out of fight or flight. And that's happening on Thursday, September 15th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. And you can email me at cs at claudiasamsoulcoaching.com to say, hey, I'm interested to join your pop-up workshop or just go to my website, claudiasamsoulcoaching.com and you can, you know, fill out a contact form there. And I'd love for you to be there. It's free. How fun will that be? How fun will that be? So yeah, if you want a different way to to navigate the traffic, here's what I want to offer. Both are hard. You just get to choose your heart right? Both are hard. Driving in traffic that's bumper to bumper and you're in a, in a big rush to get there, right? Or you can be in traffic bumper to bumper. That's the situation. That's the circumstance. How you think about it is how you're going to show up and where your energy goes, attention goes. So if you're navigating this with frustration and resentment and anger and, and how the world is doing it all wrong, you will continue to find more proof that you're right about it. It's, the, it's one of the beautiful functions of our brain. It wants to prove you right rather than actually allowing you to get the goals and to get out of stagnation. So you can choose to be upset and angry. Your brain will more than let you. Or you can choose to think, you know what? I've got this time. I can call a friend. I can listen to a podcast. I can, I'm doing that, Claudia Sam. I'm rolling down my windows. I'm busting up some Fleetwood Mac and I am dancing in traffic and I I can't wait to watch all the views. And I hope that I inspire them to also roll down their window and listen to their favorite music. So (laughs) you just get to choose your heart. And and I'm sorry, that this last one, rolling down your windows and listening to your favorite music, that seems way more fun way more fun to do. So I hope you will navigate your life by using the tune in method and head over to um, her website, email her at cs.claudiasamsoul.com and soulcoaching.com. (laughs) Soulcoaching.com. Yes. CS at claudiasamsoulcoaching.com to talk with her, to have a conversation about her, to workshop style, whatever is keeping you stuck in your life and in your heart. And I want you to choose today that you matter enough to get to know yourself, to explore the best of who it is that you are, and that you will take Claudia's tune in method and my B method and become that next best version of yourself because it's not optional. It's just not, it's not optional. We need you. We need you to show up the best of who you are with all of your gifts out into the world so that we can learn from your amazingness. Oh my gosh, yes. You have an amazing day, Claudia Sam. It was awesome having you on the show. And again, don't forget to go back and listen to part one of her show. And- I will see you next week. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. You have been listening to the Becoming You Show with me, your host, Leah Rowling, where I share big ideas to inspire, impact, and influence your life. Tune in every Friday at 11 Central on TransformationTalkRadio.com for your morning cup of coffee, the hug you never want to end, and that inspirational message that you felt was written just for you. Each show is inspiring you to become you with purpose and intention. For more information or to connect with me, visit www.leahrolling.com.